Right, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Reboot webinar series. Uh, look, I guess if you are anything like me, the only way to cope with life at the moment is simply to turn off the TV, throw the phone in the corner of the room and go for a long walk. Um, preferably somewhere near a pub, but uh, obviously they're not open at the moment, so you might have to uh, order a takeaway pint and go about 100 metres away. But anyway, look, um, we, will, we will see. Um, so just uh, I'll give you a little bit of uh, update in terms of what we're dealing with just at the moment before I hand over to, uh, to Miriam. Um, obviously, this week has been a cr crazy week on the back of another crazy week last week. So if you recall last week, was it last Sunday? It feels like it was only yesterday that uh, the government were being told by NEFET that we're moving directly to level five on Monday morning. And uh, by Monday afternoon, uh, government had stepped in to say, no, it's actually only going to be level three. So that came as a bit of a bolt of relief, I guess, at the time. Um, however, this week we've had a budget and I guess you know almost felt like the budget was the um, was actually quite a a bit of a, a nice distraction in some respects from the humdrum and the and the doom gloom and depression of Covid. Um, at least there was something there uh, in terms of you know to whet our appetites I guess you know 18 billion of a giveaway budget uh, which included you know the EWSS extension, the uh, drop in the hospitality VAT rate um, and this new CRSS, are they going to come up with some new acronyms? I'm sure they are. But the CRSS, the COVID Recovery Support Scheme, um, which was introduced on the budget day, and I believe talking to revenue is not quite up and running just yet, but will be very, very shortly. So that was at least a positive uh, announcement coming out of the budget. Um, but then, of course, hot on the heels of the budget, just when we all thought that uh, life was maybe just showing one or two glimpses of uh, the light ahead um, came yesterday evening's announcement first off that uh, that Northern Ireland was in effect going to lock down and and again we sat there going Northern Ireland locking down but from a retail perspective Northern Ireland remaining open. Phew didn't we breathe a sigh of relief when we heard that and then of course you know we get to last night and we hear the cabinet are uh, squirreling themselves away yet again and coming out of that announcement was the fact that three counties in the Republic, Monaghan Cabin and Drogheda, uh, sorry, Monaghan Cabin and, um, uh, and uh, oh, where, where, where are we? Start again. The three counties up in the north anyway, were all were going to be shutting down to go to level four. Um, so, uh, and we've obviously had that to deal with today. So non-essential retail, retailing in effect um, shut down in those border counties. Um, so we're looking for some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Miriam in a minute. Uh, Miriam has uh, got a large, a long career in, in, in retail. She's worked with Lifestyle Sports, she's worked with B&Q, she's worked with TK Maxx um, and a list of other businesses as long as your arm that she's, she's worked with. Um, she hails from Belfast, although by the sounds of her accent she's travelled all over the UK, Lancashire, Manchester, uh, London and so on and she's finally settled in Drada. Uh, at least for the last um, two years. And I know, I know that she's going to touch on a little bit of the doom and gloom to begin with, but I also know that a lot of what she's going to talk about during the course of the day is how you navigate your way through this very different Christmas that we're all heading towards over the next 10 weeks. So without a further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Miriam. If there's any questions that you've got coming up over the course of the next half an hour or so, please stick them on the uh, Q&A or on the chat, and we'll aim to, uh, to raise them with uh, and do a bit of a a uh, bit, bit of a final chat with Miriam and, and bring some of these questions up uh, at the end today. So Miriam, over to you. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, you'll notice that the picture that I had up before was my pre-COVID picture. <laughs> this is the new me with the glasses uh, due to all the Zoom calls. So um, thanks um, to everybody for giving me half an hour of your time and, and listening to me today. So I hope I don't give you too much of a migraine. So. I'm going to, I need to stop the share for a moment now because the, the, the screen has jarred, but uh, give me one second and I will uh, see if we can get things moving again. Bear with me. I think this is uh, because we were, we were so early today that we, uh, Right, here we go. So 
Um, apologies for that, guys. Just going to um, bring you all back up and get started. So let's start the, the share again. Here we go. Uh, screen jarred there for some reason. So I'm going to talk to you a, a little bit um, over the next half hour about um, how you can boost your trade in quarter four. Now, this is um, usually a two hour workshop, so we're only going to cover maybe um, two or three of the points. Um, but I'll, I'm more than happy if anybody wants the, the notes for the full workshop or the tips for the full workshop, contact me afterwards. I'm more than happy to share them with you. Um, my contact details you'll see there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And uh, um, some of you um, may uh, be familiar with some of my content on LinkedIn. Um, I, I, there's lots of trading tips that I put up on LinkedIn daily. Um, I'm not so good on Instagram. I'm new to Instagram. So very grateful for any Instagram shares from anybody today or any Instagram follows today. And my tag on Instagram is Miriam underscore PTO dot IE. So I'm going to start by um, saying to you, congratulations. So this might not feel like a very congratulations moment, but um, congratulations because you are all still standing and you're still here. And, and categorically, uh, the, the fact that you're still here means that you're making it through what is essentially the biggest challenge of our generation, possibly our lifetime. And, and I think it's quite important to, to just take a moment and, and be cognizant of that because in that fact, um, is the fact that you are survivors already. This um, next little slide here is I just want to um, show to you now. You can download this tool free from uh, pto.ie and this is a peak planning um, calendar. Now it's a really simple tool. If you think that um, we're in uncharted water. This is a calendar of the key nine or 10 weeks of the year. And there's some really good, both commercial prompts on it and operational prompts on it. And if you think that we take, we tend to absorb information um, much more visually than we do reading information. And um, so I'm quite a simplistic person. I believe in um, keeping everything real bottom line and what you need. And this is a really great document. Um, either if you have a few stores, it's a good document to give to your store managers, or if you're an independent retailer, this is a cracking document to just use as a bit of an anchor and, and do a bit of your strategizing on. So well worth it. And you can download it from free for, for free from pto.ie. So what am I going to talk to you with about today? We're going to talk about the doom because there's plenty of doom going on at the moment. So there's no point in pretending that there isn't. We're going to talk about the doom. We are going to talk about some opportunity because amongst that doom, there is opportunity. So we will talk about that. And then hopefully I'm going to give you some ideas, live ideas that I've seen work elsewhere and um, that's that may give you a little bit of inspiration and may help you get a bit of money in the till. That's what I'm essentially hoping for today. So just to give you a little bit of a, a background on me, uh, I know Duncan very kindly started to. So I own a business called PTO.ie. Don't ask me what it's called that. Too long a story for today. Um, essentially, I work with the owners and CEOs of medium-sized retailers. And I, I help them from a, um, a strategy and um, ta um, tactical trading point of view, and also from a leadership development point of view. Since the pandemic struck, I uh, started to work a lot more in the retail education space and working with groups of independent retailers to help get trade moving for them. Um, and I, I've done some programs such as the Retail Battle Plan, Restarting Retail and, and Making the Most of, uh, of Your Peak. So um, a little bit of my background, because I think it's important to give you this because it will give you some context from where I'm coming from. So um, I'm, I'm quite old. I've been in retail quite a long time. I know I don't look it, but, but I've been in retail a long time. Started as a child with Don Stores and they beat a really good work ethic into me. And then I went to um, the UK. I spent about 10 years there uh, across different parts of the UK with um, the Burton Group. And I'm sure some of you might be old enough to remember the Burton Group. The Burton Group was Arcadia when it had money. So they sort of educated me and I was with them for a long time and relocated back to Ireland with them in the 90s. 
spent a bit of time with River Island running um, their biggest uh, store in their estate, which at the time was Grafton Street. And can I say I've run some really big businesses and that was the, still the toughest job I ever had. And um, brilliant family business. Um, and then I moved to Monsoon Accessorise, and that's where I got my big girl pants as a retailer. I was a retail director for them for several years, and then I was poached, spent a bit of time with TK Maxx, and I was responsible for, responsible for their trading strategy. Um, I was a retail director for B&Q. I was head of retail for Lifestyle Sports. Um, I've been in retail in leadership roles most of my life. Now, about 10 years ago, alongside that, I started to do a bit of mentoring for Enterprise Ireland, a bit of making sure I went to heaven and um, started doing a bit of mentoring with startups, really enjoyed it, found that I got as much out of that as I gave. And uh, when I went into business on my own some years ago, I then progressed and started to do a lot of work with the European instrument or Horizon 2020. So for those of you who may not have heard of that, that's a fund in Europe for very highly disruptive technology. So if somebody has a medical technology invention or something that is going to change, maybe a systemic change in education or banking or taxation or anything like that, anything that's very future focused and will change the way we live. There is this amazing fund in Europe that you can go to and get a lot of money to help you accelerate, accelerate your business. So I do a lot of work with the businesses that are finalists for that. We're quite good at getting that fund in Ireland. And I, I mentor a lot of um, companies from all over the world that have got that fund and need some commercial help. And I do that alongside working with retail. It keeps me quite, ag quite agile. But actually, it's a real privilege to do it because what it also gives me is a really good look into the future. And it gives me a really good insight into, it helps me see round corners, so to speak. So I um, really enjoy the variety between retail and technology. Today, I'm not going to be talking about technology. I'm going to be talking about really pragmatic, no-brainer stuff that, um, that you don't need money to do because I, I think we're in a situation where it is just about being agile and thinking on your feet. So I'm going to start by talking to you a little bit about the consumer mindset as I see it. And there are three types of consumer at the moment. So we have the chap at the top there and this is somebody who either has a young family or an elderly family or somebody with an underlying health issue. And, and they're actually quite frightened. They're, they're very, very um, nervous about the situation. You know, this person probably hasn't had a haircut in eight months because they don't want to go to a barber or to a hairdresser. They're very nervous. They've been listening to eight months of COVID. So they're anxious. And then you have the consumer in the middle there. Now, this is the concerned but trying consumer, and it's actually the majority of us. And, and this is the, the, the consumer who's trying to normalize as much as possible, washing hands, you know, wearing the mask, doing all the right things and just hoping to goodness that things are going to get better. And then we have the third consumer at the bottom and no judgment here, but this is the face licking TikToker who is so over it. They're, they're so over COVID that, you know, they're, they're totally COVID fatigued. They're fed up of having their freedom impeded and they, they genuinely just do not see the threat clearly. So there's three very distinct types of consumer going on in the market at the moment. And if you think back to the, the, the big lockdown or the first lockdown that happened March, April, um, it was spring and the, the, the cherry blossom was out and we all, we all walked our dogs and played with our kids and there was this sense of, you know, we can get through this together. We're now in a situation where, you know, we're in wave two, let's be honest, we're in wave two. The nights are darker, it's wet, it's cold weather now, cold and flu season has happened and um, it's a different it's a different experience this time and, and we're all actually feeling a bit weather beaten because we've been going through this for many months so what you're seeing here is that it's a much bigger challenge for retail this year and um, the, the person who is scared is going to get more scared and those people that are in the the you know and um, concerned but trying group a lot more of them are moving towards the scared and, and that essentially is the challenge for retailers at the moment. So that takes me on to the doom. So we might as well just talk about the doom. So um, the doom, right. 
we've already started this. We're going to see these Mexican waves of mini and partial lockdowns happening. That is a sad fact of, of how the world is at the moment. We're going to see a much more nervous and anxious consumer. And if you think uh, Christmas crowds are going to be an anathema to people this year, so that's something that we're going to need to think around. We're potentially going to see those interruptions to the supply chain and um, also possible fulfillment issues, uh, you know, as the, the, the people who can uh, fulfill for you become a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of online shopping. And then there are likely going to be job losses alongside uh, quite a good bit of uh, economic scaremongering also that we need to be careful about. And, and I think it's really important to say, and I'll touch on this later, we, we tend to look to our English cousins and, and we listen to their news as much as we listen to our own news. And it's really important to, um, to be a little bit measured in that because the, the, there's a lot more of these large legacy retailers in the UK who, who probably had some real strategic issues before COVID. Um, but also the infrastructure in the UK is very different to the infrastructure in Ireland. So the UK is very much designed around very, very big commercial centres with huge commercial retail attached to those commercial centres. Whereas in Ireland, the real epicentre has actually been Dublin city centre and um, the, the arteries of Ireland, uh, the rest of retail in Ireland is much more homegrown and actually a lot more spread out across the arteries of the country. So really important to try and keep some context there when you're seeing all of these really uh, severe headlines coming from the UK. So a little bit more doom because I haven't given you enough doom yet. We still have the joy of Brexit, just in case you were feeling a glimmer of happiness today. Um, you know, in case we're not challenged enough, Brexit is still to come. And then there are a lot of things as retailers, and, and my definition of a retailer is anybody who sells anything, be it a service. If you are transacting anything for money, you are a retailer. But there are a lot of things that we would have taken for granted at this time of the year that would have been real uh, trade drivers that we can't take for granted. So, for example, you have balls and dances and award nights and Christmas parties and all the associated business that would have gone with that. So not just buying formal wear and shoes, but the beauty business, the hair business, the, the catering businesses, all the, the additional stuff that would go around that are also potentially impacted. And then things that would have been major drivers, particularly in, in the towns within our, our networks across the country, Christmas fairs and pageants, etc. things that would have naturally driven footfall are, are going to be a lot less this year because the people who manage our town centres cannot be, be seen or cannot be doing anything that's going to encourage crowds. And even Santa, not that it was ever appropriate to sit on an old man's lap for Christmas, Santa is going to be much more digital this year. So all in all, I think we're going to have to be a lot more creative and a lot more thinking on our feet this year. So um, uh, 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 just so that you can all get our heads out of the oven again, let's just a little bit about opportunity because there are actually some pieces of opportunity. So the first thing I want to talk about is the amount of people that are now working from home. Essentially, we've seen commuter culture end instantly. Now, this was something that was going to end over the next 10 or 15 years, but it happened really, really massively quickly. So um, I don't know if any of you can remember, there was this really um, idealistic plan called the Irish Spatial Development Plan that was built about 13 or 14 years and it got shelved. And it was all about decentralizing Dublin to spread the, the money and the workforce more across the country. And essentially what has happened is COVID has done that by force overnight. So whereas the Dublin city centre might be the epicentre here, there actually is a real window of opportunity here across the arteries of the country, because we have a lot more people living and working from home and, and, and uh, and, and actually with a capacity to shop locally. So for a lot of our towns across the country, there is a whole new market of people who might not be aware of your business, who if you are, if you can service them well, 
could be a, a, a whole new lifeline for you. Um, and, and that's actually being missed by quite a lot of uh, businesses at the moment. You know, I've been on, on local high streets and you'll see one retailer is double digit up because they've copped onto that. And the retailer next door is double digit down because they, they just don't know what to do to, to, to get that customer. So if I give the example of, uh, you know, there's all of these arteries of the country. So like the, the Carlo route, the, the M1 route, the M1 route alone, there were 15,000 people a day who were traveling to Dublin every day and they now are not. So that's 15,000 more potential customers that the, the businesses in the M1 corridor should be looking to, to service and looking to understand and to attract. Also for this peak, um, because of what we're all going through collectively with COVID-19, there's going to be a real need and a want for family and reunion this Christmas. Um, and, and along with that, there's going to be a real want and a need for authenticity with businesses that we deal with. And the good old fashioned values, people are going to be looking for those good old fashioned values as a source of comfort. So what I will say is thoughtfulness is back in fashion. And, and that actually, uh, for those retailers that can lean into that, is also a massive, um, a massive opportunity. So this is just, I want to just give you a little bit of a, an opinion on how I think things are going to play out. So I, I've already mentioned this Mexican wave of, of mini or semi lockdowns. We're going to see a more nervous customer and that's going to progress as the weeks go on. We are going to see a high amount of distress sales. And I think a lot of that is, again, down to the infrastructure in the UK. And we, there are a lot of the legacy retailers who are sitting on huge real estate who are in real trouble right now. And, and whilst COVID is escalating and accelerating the impact of that, um, there are strategic things there, which means we're going to see lots more headlines about closures. A lot more shopping is going to be done online. There's no point in pretending it isn't. Google recently um, released a, 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 a statement uh, about last year saying 71% uh, of uh, people last year in the UK used three or more channels to do their Christmas shopping. And last year in the UK, 57% of the gifting spent was done online. And Google are touting that they think that will be closer to 70% this year. So it's not unreasonable to expect that shopping is going to be much more online. And I think the, the food shopping will skew that figure quite dramatically also. Um, in addition to that, we have a lot more stores online because Enterprise Ireland and the local enterprise offices have done a really good job of getting the trading vouchers out there for different levels of businesses. But actually what we're going to have is we've got a lot of businesses that are online for the first Christmas ever. So there's going to be a lot of noise out there and uh, there's going to be um, a lot of people doing the whole sell, sell, sell. There's also going to be a lot of retailers realizing that the online business is, is another full time business and, and that's going to have its own challenges. But um, the difficulty is customers are going to get very fatigued very quickly with being bombarded with sell, sell, sell messages. So it's really important that you think about how you can cut through that noise. And then um, from a fulfillment point of view, I think a lot of the carriers are going to struggle with the volumes this year. So it's really important that you think about how you can manage customers' expectations if you are doing deliveries and be very clear on your service level agreements with the people that are, are delivering for you. So really, really important to think about that. And again, you've probably already seen this. We are going to see a far, far earlier gifting spend. It has already started. Uh, it's, it's already started. And th I know there were some headlines last week about the queues uh, in the Smith's Toys around the country, but actually it had already started before that. So just a few more notes here uh, about how I think play uh, peak will play out. I do think there is going to be a greater uh, focus on reunion and on family. And there will be a lot of people who are unable to travel or be with loved ones, and they will be looking for ways that they can um, make their loved ones feel that they are with them. And, and again, it's about looking to how you can help the, the consumer to do that is, is, is how you can enable. Um, there's going to be a lot more value-driven purchases, and, and I mean value as in values, 
more so than value for money. Value for money is always important, but actually people are going to be much more values driven this year. Um, and we are already seeing this real shift towards more authentic, real people businesses. We are going to see a, a huge shift this year towards subscription style gifting. And if we have time um, after the section that I'm covering with you today, we, we might talk more about it. But this is, um, this is huge actually, and is a, a real opportunity for no matter what size of a retail business you are. Um, and particularly people, people are looking for something to look forward to and subscription style gifting is an opportunity for them to do that. So we saw during lockdown um, a flourish of coffee subscriptions. I, I, somebody actually bought me one as a gift and I was wired for weeks. I, I actually had to give some of the coffee away in the end. But um, coffee subscriptions, cheese subscriptions, but um, subscription models are suited to all sorts of retail. You know, if you're a hairdresser, you know, uh, you know, could you give somebody some specialist product and give them, you know, great hair for the next six months? You know, there's there's lots of ways that the subscription model, it's a tongue twister, can uh, can really help retail. And then we're going to see a lot of much bigger spends on food, good food, luxury food, and home comforts, and um, personal comforts, and um, anything health related, anything that that feels meaningful and thoughtful. We're going right back to values. And then the, the, I just wanted to talk a little bit also about the protocol versus welcome. So we're already beginning to see this also. So there is a real tricky tightrope that we're all walking, um, which is about balancing. We, we, we've got to absolutely follow the protocol to keep everybody safe, but it's about balancing that with warmth so that you don't destroy the, the endorphin hit that the customer gets when they're shopping. And there are a lot of the, the, the mid-tier retailers that are getting that quite horribly wrong at the moment. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, where they're, they're, they're maybe leaning so far on the protocol and the team are not really... Um, upskilled enough to, to deal with it or feeling safe enough themselves, may I say. So how can we make the most a quarter for us? I'm not going to read you through these 10 things. Um, we're probably going to cover two or three of them today. We're definitely going to talk about the first couple. And uh, I have a, a sheet that goes with this that I can send out if you, if you need it. So I, I want to talk about mindset, first of all, and, and Duncan alluded to this at the beginning, that we're all so COVID fatigued and, and the news is very um, doom and gloom and, and, and a lot of misery going on. And, and if I can give one piece of advice today, it is to really watch your mind here because you need to be really careful that you don't get swept along on the doom roller coaster because it, it, it's quite dangerous to, to do that. It, it, the, the difference between um, surviving and not surviving here really is actually very much going to be about mindset. And it's about keeping your head really firmly focused on seeking the opportunity because no matter what, there is always opportunity. And I'm hopefully gonna show you some examples of what other retailers have done to um, make sure that they kept the lights on and made sure that money was still coming in. So um, if you can just, whatever happens, um, keep your head focused on, well, actually, okay, we know that that's terrible. We know that this is happening, but where's the opportunity here? You've got a much greater chance of getting through this. So I'm going to talk to you about business as usual planning because actually it's really topical and it's probably the most important uh, section in light of the news last night. So again, in short, I'm, I'm not going to read you the screen, uh, but in short, how do you trade if your footfall suddenly disappears, essentially, is what we want to talk about. So what trading levers can you pull if you need to? How can you support the customers that want to shop with you and they want something immediately, but they don't want to risk it, so to speak? So first thing I want to say is messaging is key. So it's really important that your messaging is very much along the lines of, you know, your safety is our number one priority. So think about your messaging, reinforce all the shopping options and increase your communication on your social platforms around that. And be really, really clear on the options. Can you do click and collect? Can you do call and collect? Can you do local delivery? Can you do appointment based? 
Can you do video call shopping? Can you do virtual events? And I'll give you some examples of these in, in a few moments. But also, I would um, just remind everybody to think back to the big lockdown back in, in April um, and, and where the trends were. People wanted distraction. They wanted thoughtful gifts. They wanted retail therapy. They wanted relief from boredom. They wanted anything that made them more comfortable in their home, anything that made them feel more healthy, anything that made them feel more safe. So I just want to talk you through some examples of some agile trading. And there's nothing here, you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you about AR or VR or anything fancy pants today. This is all basic um, survival techniques and, and things that I have seen across the country where people have been really, really smart and thought on their feet. So store in the north, of, uh, in, in, in the, one of the northern counties. Um, and um, when we were at lockdown, this gentleman, uh, second generation family business, he tweeted every morning, my store may be closed, but my phone is on. And he, he actually makes me feel quite emotional thinking about it because it's a lovely business and they are thriving. And um, every morning, the gentleman tweeted, my store may be closed, but my phone is on. And he would post a picture of one of the items that he sold every day without fail. It went out every morning without fail. And he traded really well during lockdown. And he's trading really well year to date. And actually, when, when retail businesses reopened, people felt really connected to him because the fact that there was this consistency of him doing that messaging every day was an anchor for people to hold on to. I'm going to give you some. Um, I, I, I'm going to give you some live examples of things that I've seen. So you could do direct phone or email contact. There was a a, a beauticians that actually in Drogheda. There was a beauticians in Drogheda, and they had um, a few hundred customers who who were on their database, and they were closed. They couldn't open, of course. And so what they did was they took a certain amount of their customers every week and they contacted them and said, how are you just checking in? How's your skin? Do you need anything? And ended up actually um, pivoting and doing a delivery service for high-end beauty products to help people mind themselves during lockdown. And can you do, you know, some, some, a lot of retailers now have an online presence and it's about really booting that up and, and, and uh, boosting it. Using third party trading partners, Bezu, eBay, Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, marketplace, even, you know, just, even if you have a website, use additional third party if you're able to. And then Facebook and Instagram product posts, you know, um, Messenger has a very, very high open rate. If you need to contact people, Messenger is a fantastic way to make sure that a message is, is, is read by your customer. And then some, you know, I'm not going to read you this. I'm just going to give you some other examples of what I saw um, during the lockdown. So there was a jewelers who, who were really, really concerned about business. And what they did was they had quite a few followers on Facebook. So what they did was they, um, they advertised a one-off Facebook Live and they did it on a Thursday night from a clothes shop. And they said, look, we've got a lot of ones and twos of of pieces of jewelry left in the business. Some of them are very high end. Uh, we've got a lot of last dolls. We're going to do them. We're going to do a show you a little bit like the shopping channel. We're going to show it to you. We're going to be on live for 20 minutes, first come, first served. And I think they took nearly 20 grand in about 15 minutes. It was amazing. The phone was ringing off the hook. I remember um, attending that sale and, and it felt quite exciting. And uh, I think I bought a Hugo Boss watch. I have no need for a Hugo Boss watch. I don't even have anybody to give it to. But I have now a Hugo Boss watch. But uh, the, the phone was ringing off the hook. It was very successful for them. There was a, another uh, business that I uh, remember speaking to um, who owned a Debs shop and, and they sold Debs dresses and ball gowns and clearly in the middle of April they were in a, a serious crisis and uh, what they did was their, their target customer is sort of 18 to 24 so they used a house party and they invited all their customers onto a private house party and they said to them you know get dressed up come along and they sent them a unique discount code and they had a um 
uh, a one-off sale at the other played some games on how on the house party app um, I'm so not cool I'm not down I'm too too old for house party uh, these guys went on the house party app some of them got really dressed up to attend this zoom of, of some sort and they had a live sale on that and they actually raised enough money to completely pivot their business and are, are, are doing very well um, another store went after thoughtful gifting and um, marketed, this is a store that has no online business, but marketed daily through social media to say, if you have somebody you care about and you need to send them a gift, we will do it for you. We will even write the message for you. We will gift wrap it. You let us help you look after the people that you care about. Again, that business is thriving. Um, furniture store that uh, I was speaking to during the lockdown who, um, you know, high ticket, they, you know, they, they were losing money hand over fist. They did one to one video, um, one to one video, 15 minute sessions with customers. Customers were able to phone up and have a video appointment and actually got far more um, personal service from that one to one. Um, cafe um, that I, I know many, many of our eateries and cafes across the country have branched out into retail and, and good food retail. And uh, actually, that's been very, very successful. Uh, I know in Drogheda that there is a, a great cafe who not only branched into retail, they, they copped on to the fact that all these commuters who used to go to Dublin weren't going to Dublin anymore. So they did a deal with the Bretzel Bakery and they brought in all the yummy mummy bread and, and all the yummy mummies now order their bread from their cafe twice a week. So um, there are lots of repurposing opportunities also. And then also actually um, to, to um, host boxes. So they're, they're, during level two, during the good old days of level two uh, restrictions, um, there was a real trend where because uh, the way we're being social is changing, there were a lot of people who were going to stay with friends or going to stay with family. So the soirees rather than parties, soirees. So there's been a massive boost in luxury host boxes where if you're going to stay with somebody, you would take take a luxury hamper, uh, you know, good food and good cheese and good pesto as a gift. And you'll, you'll notice that a lot of the high end food stores are really um, investing into host boxes or, or, or thoughtful hampers. So there are lots of uh, examples there of uh, ways that you can trade in a very agile way. And I just want to say, please don't forget your team. I talked a little bit there a few moments ago about some of the mid-tier retailers are getting it a little bit wrong between the balancing the warmth with the protocol. It's really important that your team feel that you're looking after them and that they are being messaged properly as well and that they know that their safety is also your number one priority. And I would also think if, if, you're, if you're a smaller business and you have only one or two stores, you really do need to think about work pods because at this time of the year you don't want to have somebody you know the 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 likelihood of somebody in your team going down with COVID at this point is getting greater so it's really important that you have a backup plan in case of outbreak but if you can separate the team so that you've got business as usual trading you're a little bit protected and then just to let you know, this is the this is a, a, a little worksheet that goes, this is usually a two hour session. So we've only really covered a couple of the, the, the sections, but if I'm more than happy, if you want to contact me, it's Miriam at pto.ie. I'm happy to send this on to anybody that wants. And then um, other than that, just to say, um, I also have a group called the Retail Powerhouse and it's a support group for independence and it's very much all about trading and um, again you can have a look at that on my website but just to say thanks for listening and please feel free to ask any questions. I'm just having a look into the Okay, great. Um, Miriam, I'm just turning my video back on there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Great stuff. Listen, thanks for that. That was brilliant. Um, there's a few things. I mean, I'm sure there, there may be one or two queries and chats that come up in a second, but I'm going to kick the ball, the ball off, right, by asking you whether you've had anybody giving you a better offer for that Hugo Boss watch yet. No, do you know what? My son already has one and I just got so excited. I got so caught up in the friends because the phone was ringing off the hook and her husband was running all over the shop. <laughs> 
And so if anybody needs a really good Hugo <laughs> Boss watch, I have one for sale. I have one for sale. I got Brilliant. so caught up in it. Brilliant. So um, just a, a question, because I mean, I know you've, you've worked uh, across the UK, across Ireland, um, you know, and you, you're, you're obviously researching a lot of what's brilliant out there in the world uh, in terms of retail. But how creative do you think Irish retailers really are? I, I, ooh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's not a trick question. Really. Oh, OK. So I, I think retail, it, we, we, so and I am a retailer, I am a trader. Uh, in retail, we tend to be a little bit secretive and a little bit insular and a little bit we don't want to share. And, and, and um, unfortunately, we're in a situation that actually we need to be more open and we need to share. And it's the people that are doing that that are, are actually excelling. So, you know, um, the workshop that I've just given you a few sections of, you know, the, um, the, 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 I, I've run that workshop with some of the, the um, you know, up and down the country. Um, and the, the, um, the key thing is people need to share and need to be more open. And if somebody across the road takes a tenor, that isn't a tenor that you could have taken, you know. So the, the battle plan, which was the first program I ran, which was back in April, we took 20 retailers and, uh, you know, those 20 retailers are all, one of them is triple digit up, may I say, they're all double digit up. They're all double yeah. digit up and high double digit, double digit up. And actually the community of talking to other retailers is actually as critical as the actions that they take. So it, retail is a really tough gig. It's a vocation. It's, it's not a job, it's a vocation. So yeah. it, there's an element of um, it's hard. So the more you can put support around you, the better. It's interesting you say that because I, I, I agree. I've seen a lot of... Uh comments being made in fact somebody was talking to me this morning about how sectors are just coming together to support each other far more than we've done in the past you know when times are good we're all looking for that extra bit of market share yeah. and you know times are bad like this we're all going we just don't want to see more people disappearing and pulling the shutters down do we and it, you know so if you if it almost feels as if you're helping somebody down the road if you're a, a larger retailer that can help somebody down the road just get out and do it because you know at the end of the day what's worse the worst thing that could happen here is thing is the shutters come down isn't it so we need to be helping each other yeah and and actually do you know that the um genuinely for for a lot of the arteries of the country we actually have a window of time here where this is potentially the greatest opportunity some of these towns have had in 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 a very very long time because dublin has sucked the no no offense to dublin i love dublin and i miss it greatly but dublin center has sucked a lot of that you know our resources so we have essentially decentralized by force the mm. uh, as a country and the problem is the support and infrastructure for retailers isn't there retailers tend to not see enterprise ireland or the local enterprise offices somewhere to go for support so there's a disconnect you know other than retail excellence and myself of course there are very few places for, for retailers to go for help genuinely yeah. there are yeah and, i agree and, that's a real problem you know genuinely yeah. that's a real problem yeah well you've heard it here first come to come to us come to miriam and i and we'll we'll sort you out there's there's a there's a, a, a question here from john o'brien going just wondering about black friday is it responsible to be trying to draw big crowds with the threat of covid so um so I think Black Friday will happen differently. So, so, so in Drogheda, for example, so I, I, I volunteer with the Chamber of Commerce here and I, obviously I want to help local business because um, I feel really guilty that I've never been into Drogheda until, you know, a year ago and I, I was always in Dublin. So I'm trying to help local business and we'll probably do a better than Black Friday sale and it'll be before Black Friday. And, and it'll be about stretching the hours so that people can shop at leisure. So people are not gonna want to be in crowds. So, so that's something that you need to, to bear in mind. So it, it shouldn't be about corralling people into you know, uh, one weekend. And, and my, I, I reckon the way things are gonna fall is people are buying like mad right now they are. They're buying like crazy right now. And uh, then, then it'll be at the end. So you're going to see a lot of very stressed men at the end who are absolutely terrified out shopping. So there, there may be, a, you know, and, 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 and if, if further level fours do happen, 
you know, God forgive me for saying this, it might actually be a blessing for it to happen now for a few weeks so that we open again, so that we're open for the most critical weeks. But I, I think there is a piece here where we may have to open extended hours because we're going to have to think about how we can enable people to shop. And, you know, there's, there's a, a chap who has, uh, I'm saying this because I saw it on social media before I came on here, there's a chap in Drogheda who owns an electrical shop, a great retailer, second or third generation and it's an electrical shop. He sells everything electrical, um, from a Hoover bag to a plug socket to a washing machine. You know, he has it all. And he's he's partnered with somebody to deliver within a, so many miles of a radius, a, a guy with an electric bike and a cart. And and it's on his social media today. And I thought it was quite wonderful. You know, he sort of has preempted anything happening by saying, no matter what, we're still here. and We'll get the product to you when you need it. So, so actually, you know, if you can do one thing well, it needs to be to connect genuinely with your customer because it is the, the businesses that um, actually connect authentically that are going to be the businesses that are left standing. But please don't think that because we're in this pandemic that we're all doomed because we're not. Um, actually, for, for local retailers, if you can lean into the potential new markets, there are customers that you don't even know are there. And if you can go and find them and target them, you can actually give your business an amazing new leaf of life. At least Absolutely. Life. And I, I, I've physically seen it dozens and dozens of times across the country. I have. Yeah. It's happening. And, and, and my final question before we close, Miriam, is, is I'm thinking today very much of those retailers in Cavan, Monaghan and uh, and Donegal, um, who are, you know, sh pulling the shutters down at the moment. And clearly the next, you know, so it's going to be for the next three weeks or whatever. I think it's till the 10th of November or something. But, you know, clearly very, very difficult times for those guys. Um, many of whom perhaps have not uh, yet necessarily taken your advice and done some of the things that the agile uh, people yeah. perhaps could have done earlier in, in the year. What's what would be your sort of top tip for those people as, as it stands this, this afternoon? Um, I, my top tip would be, so, um, so I have a top tip for those people and I have a top tip for everybody else uh, pre-wave pre four. Um, so top tip would be communication is everything. So you, you have been told that you can't trade normally. You haven't been told that you have to go out of business. You've just been told that you can't trade normally. So you need to look at what you can do and how you can connect with your customer and how you can still be there for your customer. Because if you can crack that, you will still trade well. Genuinely, you will still trade well. And then the other tip I would give, I talked a little bit about business as usual planning there. The time to do your business as usual planning is before you need it. <laughs> not when the sugar honey iced tea hits the fan. So mm. if you are a, a retailer in Dublin or Louth or you know a county that hasn't gone to level four, you should already have your comms for level four ready. You should already have your comms and what you're gonna do if we hit level five ready. So you should already have your game plan ready because when everybody else is floundering, you need to be the one that's going out and reassuring the public and saying, don't worry, we're still here. Just give us a contact us this way or this way or this way. We're still here. We're still going to be in touch with you. You know, everything will be fine. We've got your Christmas covered. Those are going to be the people that take the money, essentially. Great. Yeah, perfect. Miriam, we'll leave it there. Um, Miriam, Miriam Simon, thank you so much. It's been uh, inspirational. Um, we got through the doom and gloom and got onto the inspirational, positive stuff because there were some real nuggets there. And I'm sure, you know, if, if like me, you've been scribbling notes to, uh, to take away, there's some real nuggets that we can uh, implement um, tomorrow. So for all the rest of you, thank you so much. Miriam Simon, pto.ie, uh, I think is the website. Miriam, is that right? It's pto.ie. And the, the, the calendar there, the visual tool is up there. Um, and you can download that for free. And if you want me to send you the notes around all 10 parts of that workshop, just drop me a line and I'll, I'll reply with it. So. Perfect. Thanks a million. Thank you, everybody. And um, good trading. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we're a long way from the rest of the country going into level four. Better luck. Fingers crossed. Eh? Yeah. Have a good day. Bye for now. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.